Hello Vapors. Uh, this video I'm going to show you how to build a K-Fun light. And uh, before we get started I want to go over a few things. Uh, one, uh, this hole right here is the air hole. And there's the uh, control for the airflow. And this was a, I'm not sure exactly what size it was, but I drilled it out uh, to a sixteenth and then step drilled it again to a three thirty second size hole uh, to, I like the looser draw, an area draw, so I drilled it out. And to do that, you have to remove the center pin here. You unscrew the center post and that attaches this block right here. It's threaded on the end. So you have to remove that and then drill halfway through with whatever size bit you're going to use. Like I said, I use 3 seconds. Uh, this is a 3 seconds bit. And you can see that fits right in there. And it's about that deep. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Uh, I'm looking for about a between a 1 and a 1.5 ohm build. And I've already wrapped my coil with 28 gauge Canthal around a 3.30 seconds bit. It's eight wraps. I built one earlier uh, with nine wraps and it came out to 1.5. So uh, anyway, we have our coil here. And I'm going to uh, make this a chimney style uh, build, which means I'm going to have the coil sitting over the air hole like this and the air will flow up through the center post and through the center of the coil. Okay, so without any further explanations, let me go ahead and start building it now. And first what we're going to do is use a toothpick to slide through the coil to hold it straight somewhat in line with the air hole. Just get it a, in the general position. I'm going to wrap one leg around the negative, uh, positive post here and tighten that down. Okay, just move that excess out of the way here. And on the other, the negative post, this is actually opposite of the way I usually build them. I usually attach the negative post first and then the positive post, but this one, the K fun, is a little bit different. So I attach the positive post first. Now I'm going to attach the negative post. I'm going to wrap the wire around there and tighten up that negative screw. I want it to pop out of there, so I'm going to have to loosen it up again.
tightened up pretty good. Oh, I missed it again. See if I can fix this before. Here we go. Being the little dickens it is. Push that wire under that screw. There we go. All right, finally. excess out of the way and I'll go ahead and snip off these excess legs Okay, now if you take a look, you'll see the coil is sitting on the deck or on the positive post, and we don't want that. We'll have to raise that up off of that deck. Because if we left it there, it would short out. Okay. See that? Focus isn't very good on the camera. But we'll stick our toothpick back in and make sure that we're our coil is positioned directly over the air hole. I'm gonna move this leg up a little bit.
Okay. You see? We're right over our air hole. Our coil is sitting above the block. And uh, let's test it and see what kind of ohms we have here. Good old Vamo. Okay, we got a 1.1. I don't know if you can see that. A 1.1 ohm. Yeah, there we go. One point one ohms, which is pretty good. I like to keep the K fun above one ohm. All right. So now what we're going to do is test fire the coil, and we're going to squeeze that coil together a little bit more because some of the uh, coils aren't quite touching. So let's see what we got here. We want it glowing from the inside out. So we'll heat it up, let off the button, use our tweezers, and squeeze it and hold it tight for a few minutes, well for a minute or two. Let it loose, reheat it. And that's looking about exactly like what we want. Okay. So our coil is done. And now We just wrap it with our cotton. And I would use this ohm meter to check the ohms, but uh, it's kind of fluky. Sometimes it reads good, sometimes it doesn't. That's why I use the VAMO. It seems to be more accurate. Okay. So we've got our coil built and in position you can take a little piece of cotton and this isn't uh, very dense at all it's it's pretty thin and rather than twist the cotton I'm going to just kind of mash it together to make it small enough to thread through on the coil Kind of roll it just a little bit, but you don't want to twist it up. Although you might want to twist the very end of it, just so that you can thread it through where you have to. Now you're probably wondering, well, where in the hell is the, the wick going to go? Well, you stick it through on that negative post lead. Pull it on through, and you'll notice it's bunching up just a little bit. That's really what you don't want. So we're going to kind of coax it along. There we go. Now see, see how loose that is? And that's what you want. You don't want the cotton very dense at all. Okay, so we'll stick about this much through the coil. Make sure it's loose fitting. We're going to cut off our excess cotton here. 
leave a little excess because you're going to want to wrap it around the coil but not much So if you can see, we've stuck that coil between the negative leg and the coil itself. So then we're going to wrap this cotton around the coil like so. You want as much of the coil covered as you can get. I'm going to bring this piece of the cotton around this way and we're going to bring this piece of cotton around the opposite way okay and the way the K-Fun works you have an inner chamber that fits over the coil area and you see these little uh, channels right here. This is where your juice is going to flow in from the tank and up the side to your upper deck. And your cotton is going to be sitting on your upper deck which is going to wick the juice from the upper deck to, to the uh, cotton surrounding the coil. Okay. And it helps, basically I'm just getting an idea of how long the cotton needs to be right now. So I'm going to trim a little bit of this cotton off. Do this other side. I'm going to guesstimate it. Cut off some of that. Okay. Now, it helps because the juice will act sort of a, as an adhesive. So just wet your wick down with some juice. Wet these legs down, just the wick legs down just a little bit. And you'll see you'll be able to work with the uh, cotton a lot easier. And then you want it on that upper deck, and you don't want to block those channels. And you want to keep it, keep the cotton away from these threads that the uh, inner chamber will screw on to. And you can see if, once you wet the cotton you can kind of position it where you want it and it'll stay there. Whereas if it was dry it, w it wouldn't do that. And just a little bit more. Now we got that side done. Okay. Now we're going to do the other side. And again, I'm going to wet this cotton down just a little bit. Just to make it easier to position where you want it. Keep it away from that channel and away from the threads. And see that's what we end up with. Okay. Now I'm going to take the uh, the base off of this meter. Install it onto the mod. And 
test fire it just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay. So it's test firing pretty good. A little dab of dew and more juice. And so you can see it better, I'm going to take it off the mod for right now. Okay. Now we're just about ready to put it back together. We'll make sure that the cotton is not on the threads and it's not obstructing these channels that are cut into the uh, upper and lower deck. All right, so we're ready to put our inner chamber on. Okay, and slide it carefully over the wick and the coil. Now it's going to fit in there like that. Then we're going to place or screw our top of our inner chamber on to the chamber ba inner chamber base. And see what we have, and that's why the K fun the juices taste so good in it because this chamber is so small, and it. Uh, it, it helps the flavor uh, to produce a better flavor. Okay, so that's what we have. And the tank is going to fit around the outside of this inner chamber, and the pressure and the heat, uh, the pressure, the vacuum from vaping on the K fun and along with the heat from the coil is going to draw the liquid into these channels on either side and up past the inner chamber wall up to the upper deck of the coil and the wick. So we're ready to put our tank on. Screw our first base on. By the way, this uh, the K Fun light, these tanks, and I'm using the uh, stainless steel rather than the polycarbonate uh, extension or tank. Uh, I like the looks of it better. And this tank, when uh, fully assembled, will hold four and a half milliliters of juice. That's what we have. Put our top portion of our tank, screw that on. Okay. See what we have here. And last but not least, we have our top cap. And you see we have an O ring, and that O ring will fit a, around this uh, the chimney here. Get a better view around the chimney right here. Okay. So that'll seal the tank up. Oops. And go ahead and screw that on. And my hands have a little bit of juice on it, so I'm just going to use a paper towel to tighten everything up. Now some people 
you know, I said, oh, well, you know, K-Fun leaks, you know, whatever. Well, this is a, a K-Fun light clone. And the first time I rebuilt or built it, uh, it did leak on me. It came through the air hole and it came through the top. And the reason that was is because I filled it exactly like this, held the nozzle to the uh, fill port on the bottom and squeezed the juice into it. Well that created enough pressure that it uh, the juice went past the o-ring on the chimney and then also went into the inner chamber enough that it went through the air hole and, uh, that's coming through the center post and came out of the air hole in the, on the base. So in order to uh, prevent that, what I did was used a syringe used a syringe to fill it and there was no leakage so we know this holds about four and a half milliliters so I'm going to give it about four and a half And the syringe needle is much smaller than the fill hole, so it allows air to uh, backflow without creating any pressure within the tank. Therefore, you eliminate your, your leaks. And take your time. Okay. That was about four and a half milliliters. And I've got my little screw for the fill hole. Let me wipe this excess juice out of here. I'll go ahead and tighten that up. Whoops. Well, we almost had a major accident there. Speaking of accidents, I totaled a car today. Yeehaw. Okay, so we've got it filled. No leaks on the top. No leaks from the air hole on the base. Okay. And we're going to install it onto our mod. Now I'm not using the stock. Uh, drip tip. I'm using one that's got a little bit larger hole in it since I drilled out the, uh, the hole, the air hole on the base. And as you can see, there's a difference in size there. So I'm going to use this one. That's a little bit more air through. Now if I can get my camera assistant to take a video of me I'll go ahead and do a vape for you so you can see how this build turns out Not too bad, you know, the K-Fun 
is uh, designed for flavor and not necessarily vapor. Uh, but drilling the air hole out, you tend to get a little bit more vapor. Uh, flavor is about the same. So let's see what kind of vape I can get off of this. Not too bad. And the vapor, you know, the vapor production is pretty good. Flavor is outstanding. Uh, I think, uh, this is comparable, probably a step up from a cartomizer tank. Uh, I think that people who try it and build it uh, with a chimney coil, I think will be impressed with the flavor and the vapor production. Now let me do another vape. Not too bad at all. No leaks. You can turn it upside down, on the side, let, leave it laying on the side. Uh, it's not going to leak out, so it's better than a Jenny. You know, they, it works exceptionally well. And uh, so anyway, that's my build on the K-Fun light with a chimney coil at 1.1 1 .1 ohms. Uh, that was eight wraps on a 330 seconds drill bit. And I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it was uh, a little bit long, but uh, that's just the way it happens sometimes. I wanted to kind of go through some of the things that I had done with it. So anyway, uh, vape on and vape strong. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.